Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. He has a podcast on our show, and he is part of our podcast community. It's Stavros, and he's back today, and he's going to talk about weight loss and how to make weight loss easy, how it can be easy and effortless. And he's going to show you how today during his discussion, and he has some great advice. So put your ears on and start listening, because if you're looking forward to looking good in that bathing suit this summer, now's the time to start. So Stavros, tell everybody a little about yourself and how do we make weight loss easy? Hi, Stacey. Thank you for having me on your show. Uh, yes, I always tell people that uh, weight loss should be easy and keeping it off should be effortless. And if it's not, there's something wrong with the program you're following. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a I'm a uh, sustainable weight loss coach. I actually teach people how to lose weight with minimum effort and keep it off with no effort at all. Because I'm a big believer that if you're struggling, it's not necessarily something wrong with you, but something wrong with the method that you're using. Right. You know? Uh, so, that's a good question, though. How do you make weight loss effortless? Well, to answer that question, I think we first need to look at human nature. Because I think that's the best way I can, it will make more sense when I answer the question, how to make it, weight, um, how to make it effortless by understanding human nature. Right. Uh, I don't know if you know that 95% of our day, it's run by a subconscious mind. Basically, habitual behaviors is run what runs our, our most of our day. And the reason that is, is because if you look at our conscious mind, it's very limited of uh, how much information you can process. Just to give you an idea, right. the conscious mind can process something like 40, uh, 40 bits of environmental stimuli per second. Wow. Basically, you can only do one thing at a time. That's it. The subconscious mind, on the other hand, can process 40 million bits of environmental stimuli per second. In other words, it can do almost unlimited things all at once. Okay? Wow. Now, you take those two minds, and let's look at life now. So our conscious mind can do only one thing at a time. So if every time you sit down to eat something, you have to sit there and figure out calories or carbs or whatever. Mm -hmm. That means you take some of the focus away from enjoying your meal yeah. and you have to focus on figuring all these things out, which means you take away from life. Yeah. And it's the same thing with anything else that you do. If you look at all the current methods of weight loss, look at the behaviors through which they help people lose weight, like counting calories, counting points, measuring carbs. Uh, long, hard workouts. Yeah. All those things take a lot of, it take mental effort, but can never become habitual either, either which means you always have to rely on the conscious mind yes. to follow those behaviors. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how many apps you have or how many gadgets we have that we can keep track of all those things. Right. At the end of the day, you still need your conscious mind to do the figuring. Yes. And it takes away from life. Mm -hmm. The question that I have is, when I lived in Greece, how come we never thought about our diet? We never did any of those things that recommended by uh, fitness professionals today, counting calories, points. We basically lived our life. We never worried about our health or weight. Right. And we maintained our lean, healthy body, no problem. And that has a lot to do with the fact that all the behaviors that kept us in shape were habitual behaviors. Mm -hmm. In other words... Our conscious mind was free to do whatever it wanted. You know, it was to focus on, on life instead yes. of focusing on the diet because mm -hmm. our diet and our healthy habits were run by our subconscious mind. Right. And that's what made it so effortless for us to, to maintain a lean, a lean and healthy body. Mm -hmm. So to me, the only time weight loss should take a little effort would be to until you develop the right habits. Right. And I think on the previous show, we talked about what are some of those right habits. Yes. To me, the one thing I always tell people is whenever you're trying to lose weight, look at the behaviors through which the program you're following is trying to help you to lose weight. And ask yourself this question. Can those behaviors become habitual? Mm -hmm. If they cannot, don't even bother sticking with the program because it's only a matter of time before you burn out. Right. You know, to me, it's essential that the behaviors to which you lose the weight become habitual. Yeah. So eventually, 
you don't need to think to stick with those behaviors. Right. So to me, that's why I always tell people that um, that that the habits is the key. Because at the end of the day, by the way, nobody really has a weight problem anyway. Mm -hmm. What we have is a behavior problem. Weight gain is only the symptom of our behaviors. Right. And, and you know, 95% of our day, we run an autopilot. Mm -hmm. So that's why to me it's essential that the behaviors become uh, so habitual so you would don't think. Yes. You know? Uh, so that's the one thing. It's, the next thing is, the next obvious question is, well, how do you change behaviors? Mm -hmm. And again, if you, uh, because you could be trying to develop behaviors that can become habitual, but depending on how you approach them, that might not become habitual. For, in, for example, uh, the way we apply change in our lives should be in small increments. Yeah. Because if you try to change too many things in your life at once, mm -hmm. there's a very good chance you cannot burn out yeah. before those behaviors have a chance of becoming habitual. Yes. 100%. Uh, are you familiar? You know, are you familiar with the uh, Kaizen philosophy? It sounds familiar, but I, I don't. I don't know it. It's a Japanese word. It's like actually, uh, it's an ancient Asian philosophical system mm -hmm. on how to apply change. Right. Uh, I think Toyota Company is one of the first companies to actually use it. And they went uh, in 1949, if I remember correctly, they were going bankrupt. And we all know Toyota Company now. It's one of the most uh, successful car companies in the world. Right. And they did it the Kaizen way. What is that? It's small changes over time. That's it. Mm -hmm. Because to me, is when we the problem that we have is a lot of times we get excited, we want to gain shape, we want to when I gain the best shape of our lives as fast as we can. Yeah. And the best way to get there is to make big changes all at once. Yes. But that goes against human nature. Mm -hmm. You see, like I said, ninety-five percent of our day is run by habitual behaviors. Every time you introduce a new behavior into your life, mm -hmm. initially that behavior has to run by your conscious mind. Right. And remember, the conscious mind can only do one thing at a time. So right. if you introduce five new behaviors into your life, there's five things your conscious mind now, besides everything else you have to do in your life, <laughs> is responsible for. Right. Can you see why most people have a hard time being consistent when they have to rely on the conscious mind? Yeah. So what Kaizen does is we, we they work with human nature. Mm -hmm. my whole, by the way, my whole approach is based on that. And... They help people change one thing at a time. As a matter of fact, I like the uh, Toyota story. What the uh, manager said to the factory workers, like, listen, we don't care how small the change you suggest is. We want to hear it. Mm -hmm. So people felt comfortable with small suggestions. So they would say things like, well, one guy was working on the horn. And he said, well, the seven screws on this horn, really four are essential. The other three, they're not really doing anything. Yeah. So let's remove three screws. Now, what difference would three screws make in the overall process? Not that much. Right. But three screws there, one screw there, another screw over there. All of a sudden, it becomes a big difference. Another guy suggested, instead of having the screwdriver on its side, hang it from the ceiling. So mm -hmm. this way... It's easier. I, I have to waste the motion of reaching down for it. Right. Again, small change. Mm -hmm. And that's how Toyota went from a company going bankrupt in 1949 to one of the most success, uh, successful comp, car companies in the world. And it, the same thing with fitness. Don't go look at look look at your life. I mean, look at your habits, actually. Yeah. If you're overweight and out of shape, that means you're engaging in behaviors that are not good for your health, period. Right. So... Identify all the unhealthy behaviors you have and pick the worst one mm -hmm. and then work on changing the habit. And if right. let's say the habit is too big of a habit, breaking down to smaller pieces. I'll give you an example. Uh, junk food. You know, I used to be a huge junk food here. Most people or most uh, fitness professionals tell people you need to eliminate junk food from your day, from your life. If it was that easy to eliminate junk food, Junk food companies will be out of business by now. <laughs> Obviously, they're not. Right. And, and by the way, I have nothing against junk food. I like my junk food. So my first attempt was to eliminate it completely. I felt miserably, like most people. So what I did instead was I started eliminating from one or two days out of the week. 
So I would say Monday and Tuesday, no more junk food. But I can have junk food for the rest of the, rest of the week. And that's how I went from having junk food every single day to now I only have junk food on the weekends. And even then, not always. I did it gradually. Right. It was much easier for me to get used to doing that instead of going cold turkey. Yeah. Then I went to the next habit. And let, let's let's say uh, you need to introduce the walking habit in your life. Mm -hmm. Most fitness professionals will tell people that you must do at least 20 minutes of cardio three to four times a week. Right. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't walk at all, you know, you get home, you're tired. If you have to do 20 minutes of cardio, what is the chance of you actually doing it? Right. Again, slim to none. Yes. What I tell my clients is start with one minute three times a week. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot tell me that you did not find one minute to do cardio. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even if you're tired, if you know your coach is going to be asking you, did you do the one minute? Yeah. Even if you're tired, you're going to go and do it because it's only one minute. Right. What people, the mistake that uh, the fitness professionals make is that they approach exercising completely wrong. You see, the first goal of an exercise program is not results. Right. It's actually to develop the habit of exercising. Right. Once you develop the habit of exercising, that's when you push to get the results you want. So in other words, let's go back to the example of uh, walking. Once you get used to walking for one minute, what, what's going to happen on your own? You can all of a sudden decide to do maybe five minutes. Right. And then 10, and then 10 minutes because you get into the, the routine. Every time you come home, you jump on a treadmill or you go outside walking on the street. It becomes a routine. And once it becomes a routine, it's so much easier to add to the routine. Right. And, and that's why I tell people like losing weight should be easy. Mm -hmm. You know, well, at least not overly challenging either. Right. Because you're working on one habit at a time. Right. And before you know it, you've, you've made enough changes in your life. Right. That it's going to reflect on your weight and on your health. But because you did it so gradually, mm -hmm. you're not killing yourself. Yeah. So when you finally start losing weight, you're going to be enjoying the process. Right. You know, I mean, I, I, does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think people, they, they start out and they, they like jump right into it. And when they jump right into it, they, they go overboard to the point where they get so exhausted, you know, from, from, from going from one extremity to the next extremity that they, they give up after a while because it becomes too much for them. Like I had, I'll give you an example. I had a friend, I told her not to do it. She did it anyway. She did a, one of those crash diets where she was eating carrots and celery and, oh, and yeah. she was doing what, you know, it was, uh, and so she's, she's cutting celery up every day. She's cutting carrots and she lost a tremendous amount of weight in a short period of time. But then in yeah. a, in a short period of time, right after that, you know, how long can you live on carrots and celery, you know? And, exactly. her, and she went back to eating regular food and she gained pretty much almost all the weight back, you know, and I told her that was going to happen. You can't, you have to eat a, a diet that's sustainable and satisfying, but you have to be smart about it, you know, and exactly. like you said, you could, you, you don't have to have a ton of exercise in your diet. You could, you slowly tweak your way up. So then it becomes a lifestyle and you're doing it slowly, tweaky, 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 tweaky. And, and then it becomes easier to, to sustain and it becomes once it becomes natural then you just keep doing it and it doesn't even phase you after a while i think exactly no i agree i agree because i always tell people that uh, a quick way to tell if if you'll be able to keep the weight off with a particular diet is ask yourself whatever that diet or weight loss program is asking me to do can i live with that for the rest of my life exactly and that's exactly what you said you know, can you live on, on carrots and celery sticks for the rest of your life <laughs> i couldn't <laughs> I like carrots, by the way, and celery sticks, especially yeah, carrots. But, but you cannot live, you cannot sustain life like that. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, you, know you take all, all the fun away. Yeah, exactly. And I know because I know that, unfortunately, again, another wrong mindset is that, oh, once I see results, I'll be motivated to keep going. Right. And I always tell people, if results was enough to keep people motivated, how do you explain the fact that 95% of the people who lose weight gain their weight back? Right, exactly. Because the simple fact is that the best results in the world would not keep most people motivated to keep going if the results were achieved through a method that's overwhelming. 
Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most weight loss programs are overwhelming yes. because are created by people who love fitness. And I think that's where the disconnect is. Yeah, I agree. You know, because in the, do unto others as you like done unto yourself. Mm -hmm. So most fitness professionals get into the fitness industry because they love fitness yeah. and they enjoy spending hours working out and eating their carrots and everything else. Mm -hmm. And they apply the same philosophy to their client, not realizing that the average person doesn't live to exercise. Yeah. I'm inclu including myself in it. I never liked exercising or fitness. Mm -hmm. I got into the industry because I realized that, that people in the fitness industry do not understand people like me who want to be in shape. I want to live a long, healthy life. Yes. But my life is not about fitness. Right. Exactly. And and the other thing, too, that I get a lot is people say, well, uh, you know, because you know, everybody wants results by tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I always tell them the slow and steady way of losing weight is actually the fastest way to lose weight. It only seems slow. Yeah. And here to, and to prove it really quick, how many people do you know who have been losing the weight the fast way? For years, and they're still overweight. Right. Because they lose it, they gain it back. They lose it, they gain it back. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you be better off taking a neck, taking your time, even if it takes you an extra month, two, three, four months to lose the weight, but you do it the right way and then never have to worry about it again? Exactly. And that's why, to me, I always tell people that, I mean, the story with the hare and the tourist, right? Mm -hmm. it, and yet nobody learns about it. Yeah. You know, the, the slow and steady wins the race. It does. But people always say, well, I'm not, you know, the hair in the, store, in the tourist story. Oh, I'm not going to be like the uh, hair that actually stopped and rest. I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is if you push yourself too hard, you burn out. You do. You know, unless, of course, you're an athlete, it's a little bit different because, hey, if somebody was paying me millions of dollars to work out like crazy to be in top shape of my life, I have no problem either. <laughs> but nobody's paying us millions of dollars. Exactly. Uh, to to get in shape. Although I believe that taking care of your health worth a lot more than millions of dollars. Yes, 100%. You know, because at the end of the day, what's more important than your health, you know? Exactly, exactly. I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, they just, uh, they, they think it's so easy because I think, you know, those, the, those fitness experts on, on, on a lot of those, you know, you'll see them on the social media, they make it sound like it's so easy and you'll shred the pounds off in, in no time. And, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, and then I'll look, you know, for fun, I'll look at the reviews and people are angry, people are mad, people are upset and disappointed because, you know, it's never as, as wonderful as, as a lot, you know, a lot of these, these diets and fads make themselves sound, you know, because it's, it's virtually, like you said, impossible, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think the word diet is a good word. I, I think it's better you to just say a lifestyle change, you know, because it's just like, you know, it, it, you know, you change your eating habits, you change your way of living. And I think if we keep the word diet in our head, I think sometimes we, we get stressed out just hearing that word. Yes. You know what I mean? What it's in human nature to want what we cannot have. So the moment you become restricted of what you can eat, all of a sudden you want that food even more. And I think yeah. that's where and, and unfortunately diet's gotten a bad name because technically diet, but well, which happened to be a Greek word, by the way. <laughs> it, it, it literally means, you know, what do you eat? Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't indicate restriction but unfortunately right. today diet means you you know you're restricting yourself on some food or something yeah in in, in our society that's what it means but yeah. yeah and i think and the other issue i think that the industry has is that they try to change people's behaviors mm -hmm. without first changing the way people think because yes. think about this Think uh, your thoughts is what drives everything. Yeah. You know, some are conscious thoughts, some are habitual thoughts. So you don't even realize you're having it. Because yeah. the way you think affects the way you feel. The way you feel affects your behaviors and the behaviors affect your health. Right. If you try to change the uh, your behaviors, but without changing the thoughts that drive the behavior, yeah, you can have a very hard time to say the least of changing the behavior. And yeah. the analogy I like to use all the time is like, uh, you're driving a car, right? And you want to bring the car to a stop. So mm -hmm. you step on the brake, but 
if you never let go of the gas pedal and you keep pressing on the gas pedal as you're pressing on the brake, the car isn't going to stop yeah. unless you have some really serious brakes. <laughs> and, and even if you manage to stop it, eventually the brakes will burn out or you blow up the engine. Right. And the same thing with the body. You you have to change the thoughts that drive the behavior. I'll give you an, a quick example. If you believe, and unfortunately, I hear this a lot in the nutrition industry, that hunger is an emergency, that if you let your body go hungry, uh, your, body, your metabolic rate is going to slow down and your body's going to eat up your muscles, which, by the way, neither of those two things are correct. Mm -hmm. But if that's what you believe and that's the thought you're having, and then yeah. I come along and tell you, you need to allow your body to go hungry before you eat. Yes. You're going to have a very hard time following that. Even right. if I give you all the research behind it to uh, to prove that that allowing your body to go hungry and allow and go for prolonged periods without food is extremely beneficial to your body. If the thoughts that you keep in your head that hunger equals bad and equals metabolic rate slowing down, you're not gonna be able to do it. Right. And that's why, to me, I'm a I'm the first thing that I teach my clients is how to develop a healthy mindset. Yeah. Because the mindset, it is basically sets the stage for success or failure. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that the thoughts alone can make you sick. Because yeah. thoughts is what creates stress. Yes. You know what I mean? Stress is not created by situations in your life. Right. It's created by the thoughts that you have about the situation in your life. Yes. And to me, if, if you develop a healthy mindset, all of a sudden the process of changing behaviors and losing weight becomes a much easier process. I agree. And again, that, that's, and again, and that's why I always tell people that if you have a hard time changing a behavior, sometimes you have to dig in and find out what are the thoughts that I have around this behavior? Yeah. Could it be the thoughts that I'm having that makes it really hard for me to change that behavior? Right. You know, I think that's so true. I, I think people, you know, tend to, um, you know, they get so caught up in a negative mindset, you know, like they, they worry and they worry and they worry and they stress themselves out. I, yeah. have, I know people that, you know, have lost the weight and all they kept, you, all you hear them talk about and is, is calories and food and dieting and da, 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 da. And they can't get it off their head because of the fear of gaining back the weight. But then they're not enjoying themselves, like you said earlier in the conversation. When they're going out to the restaurant, they're feeling guilty when they're in, they should be just enjoying themselves. If they're on vacation or they they are going out on a Saturday night to enjoy a nice meal with somebody, they are feeling guilty and stressed because they order something and then they ate it and it's like, oh well, it's not you know hundred yeah. percent good for me and you know I shouldn't have ate that and da 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 da. But it's like, that's not the way to live, you know? Exactly. And I think that that's, uh, to your point, is I think that's part of the reason why we are in, uh, it's a, the weight loss industry is a failing industry. Yeah. I mean, the obesity rate is going, I mean, when I got oh into gosh, the industry yeah. back in 1992, the obesity rate was 12.6%. Today, we surpassed 40%. And by, I think, uh, uh, 2035, supposed to be surpassing 50%. Oh, really? Yes, 51% wow. to be exact for the world. And the problem is that if you look at all these methods of weight loss, they make your life miserable. Yeah. And to me, I'd rather be fat and happy, <laughs> and even though I have a shorter life, than be fit and miserable. Yeah. And that's really the two choices people have. You want to be uh, overweight and happy, or would you like to be fit and miserable? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's what I'm trying to bring to the world is a third choice, where you can be and have a lean and healthy body and enjoy life. Yes. And how do you do that? Well, the same way people in healthy regions do it by developing yes. the right habits and, and making a part of your life. So eventually to me, a lean and healthy body should be the natural outcome of simply living your life. Right. And that is unfortunate that most weight loss programs do not teach that. And I think that's yeah. why we're failing. And I think the other issue that we have is uh, self-image. Mm -hmm. You see, in Greece, you looked around. By the way, when I lived there, unfortunately, that's not tr true for mm -hmm. most of Greece today. 
Yeah. But when I lived there in the 70s and 80s, you looked around, everybody was thin. Yes, they were. So you almost, it was like, that. that's the self-image everybody had. And if you gain a little weight, it was very noticeable. So you automatically want to go back to fit in with everybody else. Yes. Unfortunately, our society now is so overweight that even if you gain weight compared to other people, ah, I still look good. Yeah. So we compare to ourselves to other people who are worse off than us. Yes. And that's why I think that's part of the part of the issue that becomes uh, easier to become overweight because nobody notices because our society has become so overweight. Yeah. And to me, unfortunately, that's catching up with us. I mean, if you look at the statistics, uh, we're getting by 2035, we're going to be spending over four, the world over $4 trillion a year on combating all the diseases that come from obesity. Yes, I think it's. I think uh, diabetes tripled, and I, I, I don't know if it's the last year or last two years. It, it, it tripled in the amount of people who have it. It's, uh, you know, and, and it's a scary thought, you know. And, and you know, you look at our food industry, and everything is processed. Everything is fast, 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 and people, you know, don't really like to cook as much anymore, you know. And uh, you know, the behaviors of people have changed, and. You know, and and it's going back to that mindset, that healthy mindset. You know, you don't. It doesn't have to be hard, and it doesn't have to be stressful to be healthy. You know, you could make it fun. You know? Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing is that, see, back if you look at healthy regions today, that they're getting fewer and fewer. By the way, uh, part of the reason they're able to maintain their good uh, shape is because through the traditions. Uh, these good ha healthy habits are passed down from generation to generation. Yeah. Unfortunately, in modern society, we lost a lot of our traditions, and we no longer have healthy traditions that can be passed down from generation to generation. Yeah. And instead, we have the marketers brainwashing our kids and ourselves on what to do. Right. And that's to me what I'm trying to bring back to the uh, modern world mm -hmm. is healthy traditions. They can become part of our lives in the yes. way that I always say that since we cannot move to the healthy regions, mm -hmm. maybe we can bring the healthy regions to us. Yes. And I, and I, I truly believe if people really knew how simple and easy it is to lose weight when you have a system that works with human nature, yeah. I think everybody would be one of the, everybody would join and, and lose the weight and be in great shape because no matter what I hear from people say, ah, I'm good enough. I think deep down, everybody wants to be lean and healthy because oh, we, so. the quality of life is so much better. But sometimes we, because we've tried so many times to lose weight and get in shape and failed, mm -hmm. we start thinking that's, that's not achievable for me or it takes too much effort. Yes. So in a way, I don't blame the people. I actually blame the industry because the yeah. industry is the one who created these ridiculous programs that go completely against human nature yeah. that burn people out. And what about all those 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 supplements? Oh, you'll lose you know x amount of weight in you know in this short period of time. And you know I would be sent like samples to try, and for the hell hell of it, I would try to see. And yeah. I'd, I'd be on and I would try and my weight didn't move a pound, you know, it was just like either it went one or two pounds down, then it went right back up two pounds up, you know, one to two pounds down, one to two pounds up. And I was eating healthy and I was trying, and I was incorporating these, these supplements into it, but these supplements didn't, didn't make me drop any weight. You know, the, what they did was is maybe they made me feel a little fuller, but I could have celery and make myself feel full if I really wanted to. Exactly. And much you healthier know? probably too. Yeah. And, or have ginger tea, or, you know, and it would be, it would be the same thing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just hang up the phone. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, I, I tried these supplements for the fun of it and see to see if I would lose any weight and nothing changed. You know, it was just all the same. You know, it's just like I said, if, if I went down one or two pounds, oh, I got excited. Then, you know, then it would go up one or two pounds. And, you know, I think, too, sometimes you get to a certain in your when your age, too, you get to a certain age where your body plateaus. It gets to that weight where it's happy. You know, and, you know, even though you might want to lose more weight for me, I find, you know, I, I am not, I'm not heavy, but I'd like to be 10 pounds, 10 pounds lighter. I've been trying to get 10 pounds lighter for the last 10 years and my weight doesn't want to budge. <laughs> you know what? 
<laughs> what happened to a lot of people uh, with similar problems is that we are so used to eating a certain amount of food that we're almost afraid to eat less thinking this is not good. You know, like I remember right. in school, I learned that, oh, you should never eat less than 1200 calories. Yeah, yeah. Well, come, come to find out there's nothing wrong with eating less than 1200 calories, assuming you're hungry, you know, you're paying attention to your hunger. Yes. And I found that a lot of those formulas are completely off and it's overly exaggerated how much food we need. Because remember, who's working on all these formulas and how much food we need to eat? Right. The food industry. Mm -hmm. What, do you think the food industry is in the best interest for you to eat less food? Of course not. <laughs> and now, of course, you see all these studies, with the one study that's been floating around that, oh, uh, intermittent fasting, like the uh, time-restricted diet, yeah, could be bad for your heart. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> is that what the, the latest way to try to put fear into people? Right. If that was the case, all healthy regions would be having heart attacks left and right. Yeah. Because pretty much all of them eat most of the food within an eight hour or even less time. Right. So how come they're not dying from heart attacks? Mm -hmm. And and I, I find that uh, that I think what creates a lot of confusion because unfortunately, there's a lot of studies. I always tell people, I can find the study to prove whatever I want. There's right. Studies for everything. Exactly. You gotta number one, look who paid for the study. Yes. And then look at the study a little closer because a lot of the studies are observational studies. Yes. So they're not very good studies. Yeah. So to me, the one thing I tell people is like, again, show me one healthy region that eats the way that the mainstream nutritionists are teaching people how to eat. Right. There isn't one. Exactly. And, and to me, that's the best example to follow is the healthy region. That's what my whole system is based on, on following uh, the example of healthy regions which basically their habits are keeping them in shape. They have simple habits. And I think we talked on the uh, last show about mm -hmm. the how to eat habits, which I think nobody's teaching. Yeah. And before in the beginning of the show, when I talked about uh, weight loss, keeping the weight off should be effortless. Yes. I mean that because if you lost the weight by changing your habitual behaviors, mm -hmm. it would be effortless because you wouldn't have yeah. to think about it because now the habits that got you uh, the body that you want right, are habitual. You don't have to think. And since you have to think, that means keeping the weight off is effortless. Right. So it's not just a gimmick, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Now you also created a report that you're giving away. Uh, yes. Uh, I want to tell your audience that uh, if they would like to, I created this exclusive report that I give out. And actually the, the, it's the same kind of report I give to all my clients before, when they first join, which is how to make weight loss 10 times easier by changing the way you think. Mm -hmm. And if they if they want to get this report completely free, they can just send me an email to uh, Stavros, which is my first name, S-T-A-V-R-O-S, at liveyourwaythin.com. So that's Stavros at liveyourwaythin.com. And just put report uh, on the subject line, and I'll, I'll uh, send you the report. But it's a, I consider that report a must read before you start any weight loss program. Right. I think, I think mindset is very important. I think mindset, if you have a strong mindset, you could virtually like accomplish anything. It's, it's where you're, it's how you think the thoughts that are going through your head. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And also the other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, like we're talking about the subconscious mind running 95% of your day. One of the jobs of the subconscious mind is also to maintain your self-image. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if you're trying to change to lose weight, but you still have the old self-image of yourself as somebody being overweight, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a very hard time keeping the weight off because if yourself, the image of yourself is still of an overweight person, right? The subconscious mind, which runs 95% of your day, is gonna constantly try to get you back there. And how does exactly. it do that? by giving you cravings, by uh, by making you uh, want to eat more. Yeah. And that's why to me, it's, it's, it's which part of my training is that you got to change the self-image. Yes. If you want to keep the weight off. Right. Of a person who is, you know, lean and healthy. Yes, I agree. I, I think that's very important. I think, you know, and do you ever come across people who want to lose weight, but they don't think they're worthy of it? Oh, yes. 
a lot of people that they don't they think they, they, they're worthy or that they can't or they're meant to be overweight. Uh, you know, all oh, my parents are overweight, so that means I'm overweight. And, oh, it's my genes is my favorite one. And I tell people that nobody by nature is meant to be overweight. Right. We are. People are overweight. Yes, you can say it's a genetic factor. Absolutely. But the genes doesn't mean you're going to make you necessarily be overweight. All the genes uh, determine is how many bad habits do you, you can get away with. Yes. So if you have, let's call them the wrong genes, you cannot get away with as many bad habits. But right. even if you have not the perfect genes, it doesn't mean you have to gain weight or you have to have the disease. It yes. just means you have to be more careful than somebody who doesn't have those genes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I I think people, you know, they they're they're learning that you know mindset is important. The way we 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 uh, project ourselves, the way we the way we you know n you know think about it. Because if we stress ourselves out, like you said, we're going to end up you know not being able to succeed. And seventy percent of illnesses are caused by stress. So if we're stressing ourselves out, just yep. so we're trying to lose weight. We're actually opening ourselves up to more problems, not and and not just get, weight gain, but maybe breaking down our immune system. Our body's not going to be able to function as well. And if our body can't function as well, how is it going to be able to burn calories? And how is our metabolism going to be able to break down the things it needs and give and 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 build a, a metabolism to burn the fat? You know, so it's like everything plays in part. So it's really like you said, it starts with the head, the mind. Yep. And it would just work our way down and just learn how to eat healthy and just make you, eating healthy can be fun. You know, like you could really come up with a lot of great re recipes that are healthy, like just like you did with the episode when you talked about the Mediterranean diet. That was great. There are so many great foods that you could eat that are so healthy and so clean just in the Mediterranean diet alone. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before you were talking about the uh, the mindset uh, I was reading something very interesting. You could lose weight following a diet and actually become less healthy because of the stress the diet caused. <clears throat> yes. And, and that's the thing people don't get. That's why I tell people that you, you whatever diet program you're following, yeah. you have to be able to live with it because if that diet program is creating too much stress, even if you lost weight, you're still going to ruin your health. Yes. I had a friend. I had a friend who um, actually went on a diet. They cut out, She cut out all the sugar out of her diet. She yeah. lost 70 pounds, but she also oh. lost a lot of her hair. Her hair, wow. sorry, her hair started thinning out because of the stress because her body lost weight too fast. And the body, it didn't, the, the body wasn't ready to lose all that weight that fast. It just wasn't, for her body, it wasn't healthy. You know, her body's stressed from that. Exactly. And again, the thing, the more change you make at once and the bigger the change, the more the stress. Stress is not good for the body. That's why I think changes have to be done gradually, giving your body a chance to adapt. And to me, again, at the end of the day, we don't live to diet and we don't live to exercise. We need to, you know, have healthy habits so we can have a healthy body, so we can enjoy life. Yes. And, and I think that's where the industry has gotten wrong is they they made their life all about fitness. Yeah. And to me, it's like, nope, life is not about fitness or, or watching my diet. It's about living and enjoying life. But I need to have a lean and healthy body so I can better enjoy life. Yes. Mm hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And you want to be able to look in the mirror and feel good about yourself. And I, I don't, I don't see, you know, people say, oh, it's, 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 you know, um, big is beautiful. You know, that's the thing I hear a yes, lot, Yes, I know. I you know? know, and, but you know, you open yourself up to so many illnesses and are you really happy when you look in the mirror? Are you happy, you know, with, with, you know, being overweight? Are you happy? You know, cause it slows you down. You feel fatigue. It might be harder to walk. You might not be as fast anymore, you know, exercising and other things might come hard to you. You might not be able to, you know, participate in certain sports, you know, lots of things happen when you, when you start to gain weight, you know, and then you, you know, you have cholesterol, you have heart problems, stroke, all these, you know, diabetes, all these different things that you're opening yourself up to. Is it, is it, is it big, beautiful, or is it, is it good for you? You know, like, I don't think people are looking at it in a realistic way. No, no. And, and again, I think we've come to this point because 
the industry has made weight loss so hard that people have failed so many times. They start kind of accepting what is and they're trying to make the most out of it. Yeah, I and, think and, right. and that thing is, and which is, uh, which is unfortunately, if we can get, if it didn't affect our health, fine. But the fact is, like you said, being overweight, it does affect your health big time and your joints and everything else and the quality of your life. It's not great. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm trying to bring to the world a better system, a system that allows you to have a lean, healthy body and a life yeah. that's not miserable. Right. You know, and and that's why I, uh, you know, I, we started with this podcast with the, you know, weight loss should be easy and keeping it off should be effortless. Yes. If weight loss is not easy and weight loss and keeping it off is not effortless, that means there's something wrong with the system you're following. Nothing wrong with you. Exactly. I agree. You know, because I keep hearing, oh, you know, uh, you, all you need is a, you know, uh, a strong willpower and motivation. Yeah. To me, there's nothing wrong with people's motivation or willpower. Right. Willpower and motivation, it was meant to be something that get us going. Right. Our habits is what should be there to keep us going. Yes. But if the behaviors to which you lost the weight never become habitual, that means now you have to rely on willpower and motivation to keep going. Right. And the problem, as we all know, with willpower and motivation, they come and go. Sometimes you're motivated, sometimes you're not. Right, exactly. And if, you, and if you're relying on it, what's going to happen? You are not going to be consistent. Exactly. As soon or later, you guys to the hell with it. <laughs> and the thing I told you... Uh, the story, my flossing story, and which I, I think changed my whole life. Uh, well, I told the audience, that's in case they haven't heard it, is when I first came across the Kaizen method, which is small change over time, at that time I was struggling to floss regularly. Now I would go to my dentist. He would tell me not flossing enough. He would tell me all the reasons why I should floss. I would get motivated. <laughs> I would do it for a couple of weeks and then fall off the wagon. Right. And after I came across the Kaizen method about small changes, I'm like, Okay, I'm going to use it on flossing. So how can I break flossing into a smaller step possible? Well, I can floss one tooth. So I start flossing one tooth every night. Mm -hmm. Because the action was so small and easy to do, it didn't take any motivation to do it. Right. You know, up, down, done. It, there were times actually I went to bed and I remember, oh, I didn't floss. I would get up and floss one tooth. <laughs> Within a month or two, I found myself flossing every single tooth. And now flossing is part of my evening routine. I don't have to think anymore. But right. when before, when I was trying to develop the habit of flossing by flossing every single tooth, yeah, I couldn't do it. Right. And we talk about flossing, something that doesn't really take that much time. Yeah. So now imagine exercising. Right. And that's why I realized that, yes, one minute of walking might not get you too many benefits or any benefits at all. Yeah. But it will get you into the habit of walking. That's step number one. Right. Get into the habit. You know, flossing one tooth didn't make any much of a difference in my uh, uh, tooth health. Yeah. But it made me develop the habit of flossing. Now I floss every day. My teeth and gums are much healthier. Same yeah. thing with fitness. Maybe the first step or three steps might not be that beneficial to you. Right. But knowing these steps is going to lead you to the habits that will make the difference in your life. Exactly. And that's why I think sometimes we take a step back uh, from the results we want and focus, okay, what are the ultimate behaviors I need to have in order to have the lean and healthy body I want? Okay. Right. How do I break those behaviors into very small steps that I can live with? Yeah. And then work on one step at a time. I think that's great. I think that's, that's an excellent piece of advice, you know, and, you know, I, when you do it one step at a time, one little thing at a time, then it's not, it's like you said, it's effortless. And, and then by the time you finish after doing it so many times, you, you were you so used to it <clears throat> that it became natural to you. Exactly. The, uh, the, but the one thing I want to say is that if you're building a building high rise, right? Yeah. If you don't want to have to worry about that, high rise falling on the first earthquake or strong wind, you want to build it in a solid foundation. Yeah. Okay. Building a lean and healthy body 
it's the same thing. If you want to build a lean, a lean, healthy body that you can maintain for life without worrying, you want to build it in a solid foundation. Yes. And what is the solid foundation? Because everywhere you turn, there's tons of healthy habits. Okay. Mm -hmm. And new ones coming out all the time. But there are some, there are some healthy habits that are absolutely essential for a lean, healthy body and others that your body can get away not engaging in them. So what right. are those solid habits? To me, the first one is the thinking habit, healthy way of thinking, absolutely right. essential. Mm -hmm. Next one, some form of exercise. In other words, we need to challenge our uh, our muscles and we need to challenge our cardiovascular system, mm -hmm. but we don't need to kill our systems. All yes. you have to do is challenge them. Exactly. There's the difference between training for Olympics and training to be healthy. Right. The next habit, which I think that we don't talk enough about, what the industry doesn't talk about is that if I ask a nutritionist, what are the fundamental healthy eating habits? Usually they'll talk to me about some superfood. Well, right. to me, there's, that's not, it's, it's a wrong answer. Mm -hmm. The question I always ask people is, what is the purpose of eating mm -hmm. to nourish the body? I don't think anybody can argue against that. Yes. How does the body tell you in this nourishment? Through hunger. Right. That's why nature put it there. So to me, a fundamental habit is learn to eat out of true hunger. Right. Because all of a sudden, your diet becomes more forgiving. Because if you eat something that you're truly hungry, mm -hmm. even if it's something might not be the healthiest thing, well, guess what? It doesn't become as bad for the body. Right. That's why to me, it's a fundamental habit. The next fundamental habit is the, and again, the analogy I like to use is the car. What happens if you never take your car for a tune-up and you never change this oil break down right the body's no different well the good news is the body has self-tuning abilities all you have to do is get out of its way how do you do that fasting right that is why every healthy region around the world has some form of fasting that's when the body cleanse itself, gets rid of toxins, gets yeah. rid of mutated dysfunctional cells, which are the precancerous cells, by the way. Right. It gets rid of uh, uh, misfolded proteins, which are the precursors to most of the mental diseases. Yes. So that's why to me, fasting, it is an essential habit. Yes. And then you get into all the, some other, other habits about what to eat. But to me, those are the, the basis a healthy body should be built on. Yes, I agree. And unfortunately, I don't see that enough. And to me, like when I work with people, those are the first habits that I teach them. And then all of a sudden, losing weight becomes so effortless. Sometimes yeah. they, 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 they complain, they, could, they don't feel like they're doing enough, and yet the scale keeps moving down. Mm -hmm. Because again, we're so used to working hard to lose weight. When somebody's yeah. losing weight and they don't think they did enough, right? it's almost like uh, I must be doing something wrong. This cannot be right. Right, you know? exactly. I've, I've, I've known people that spend hours and hours in the gym and they get so frustrated because they'll go on the scale and, you know, they'll, they'll go up a pound or two, they'll go down a pound or two, and they're not losing the way they want to. And I'm like, well, you know, it has to do too. Like sometimes you might eat something that's salty the day before, Yes. you know, you don't, you know, we're mostly water weight too. You know, how much have you drank lately? You know, it's like, there's so many components. There's so many things that you can take into account. I think people, you know, I, I, I tell, like, I have friends that like, they work like fiends in, in the, in the gym. And I'm like, you're only going to end up hurting yourself. I said, exactly. we're not meant to, to work out like that. It's not healthy. You know, it should, they shouldn't, you know, exercise is, is a great source. It's something everybody, we should all, we all need exercise. We all need to circulate, whether it's going around the block or walking around a pond or whatever, you know, whatever you makes you feel good. But, you know, there's a point where if you overdo it, you could actually hurt your body. Look how many sports players after they finish, they play sports and, and they're, they're done. They retire at a young age. Their bodies are shot. They, yes. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I think that's something we want to avoid and it's easily avoidable for the, you know, average person. Unfortunately, again, there's so much misinformation that makes it very confusing and hard. Yes. And I hope today we kind of cleared some up some of the confusion. I think we did. Yeah. I actually think we did. Now, if you wanted to take a, everything that we talked about today and summarize it in a couple of points that you think you wanted to emphasize that people have to remember, what are some of the important things that you said today that you think people sh you know, should keep in their minds? 
I think the most important thing is that do an inventory of all your unhealthy habits and all the healthy habits you're missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then break them down into small steps and then start working on one habit at a time. Don't work on the next habit until the one you're working on is second nature to you. Right. That would, that would be the one thing I would strongly emphasize that people take with them. And also, uh, because I think mindset is very, very important. Don't forget, if you want my uh, special report on how to make uh, weight loss 10 times easier by changing the way you think, to send me the email, you know, at stavers at liveyourwaythin.com and just put special report on it. And because to me, that report is going to really help you with your mindset which again, to me is like uh, fundamental to achieving a lean, healthy body. Yes, definitely. Now tell everybody all the different services that you provide and where they can find them. Uh, basically, uh, the no, my main service is uh, sustainable weight loss coaching. Uh, basically, I help people uh, lose weight with minimum effort and keep it up with no effort at all. And you can find uh, my website at thepracticalfitnesscoach.com. And uh, that, that's the main service you can work with me. And I also offer a uh, online coaching pro. It's an online program, self-paced program. And you can find that at thestoversmethod.com, which is thestoversmethod.com. And that's a self-paced program that you can follow uh, on your own and develop all the fundamental habits that will help you not just lose the weight that you want, but keep it off effortlessly. I love it. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Stavros. You, you, every time you come on the show, I learn so much. And I, I think it's great because I think you really, you know, you, you you show people that, you know, all these trend in diets that people spend so much money for and all these supplements people spend so much money for, they're not worth it because you end up, you know, you do these things and you can only do them for so long because they're not attainable. And that, you know, the natural way and, and changing your mindset and doing things, you know, in little baby steps could actually be very big and 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 attainable. So you can actually learn how to live this life the rest of your life, look good, feel good, and be the person you want to be. Exactly. Because to me, if you do it right the, the first time, you don't have to do it again. Exactly. You know? And then whenever everybody's looking for some shortcut, you know, some uh, some hack. Yeah. The bottom line of there's no hacks. It's like about small changes over time. This way the changes become habitual and you lose the weight the, the weight once and for all. Yes, a hundred percent. Thank you so much, Stavros. Thank you for having me, Stacey. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. Thank you, you too.